Hi, my dear Astro friends. I was thinking to make a video about the Galactic Center. One of the reasons why I wanted to do that is because uh, Sun and Mercury will be conjuncting the Galactic Center um, in a few weeks' time. So Mercury will be on that point on the 12th of December and then followed by the Sun on the 20, uh, sorry, on the 19th of December. So, and this is quite a point in the in the chart which could be very prominent. So I thought that maybe if I give you a little bit of an understanding over the galactic center, then you might be able to utilize that during these uh, transitional periods. Now, um, the galactic center is on 27 degree of Sagittarius. And uh, in order for us to kind of understand what this might talk about in our chart, we're going to have to look at the discovery chart. Uh, the Galactic Center was discovered in 1974, 19th of February. We don't exactly know the, uh, the exact time of uh, birth, the, the, the birth of the chart, really. But um, anyway, we can see plenty of things already from that birth chart. So let's just have a look at what actually Sagittarius means, because obviously it is placed in the sign of Sagittarius. So Sagittarius is very much about going beyond what is known. It's about exploration. It's about um, attaining a higher knowledge, having a better understanding of, you know, we are just a small portion of the world and there is an extended um, self of the body also. So we radiate energies, we radiate uh, uh, information and so forth. So the galactic center is something which is bigger than us, really. It has, we have got that deeper philosophy going on, something that is unknown about ourselves. And then we are born actually to kind of discover all those type of facts. Uh, it is knowing that uh, there are multiple objects uh, behind the universe also. Sagittarius talks about your belief system, your kind of like ideology. And of course, your belief system and your ideology is based on your life experiences, which is also very Sagittarian. You know, Sagittarius is said to be very optimistic and future forward and uh, it has got plenty of faith. But if our life experiences are kind of negative, then Sagittarius actually can go a little bit depressed or can go, uh, it, it, it doesn't become so optimistic overall. So Sagittarius definitely talks about the fact that we do need to have a stronger con consciousness around what we know so far about ourselves, about the system we live in, and how are you going to actually grow that out? And that's why Sagittarius talks about opportunities. If we don't grab those opportunities, then of course, it's pretty much, uh, we sign kind of like, sign up for a failure overall. Now, the, the point of the galactic center, so one more time, it's on 27 degree of Sagittarius. It's kind of like a black hole. Uh, the sun actually rotates around the galactic center. Uh, and I would say that the galactic center is very important if you have got any planet within about two degrees away from that point. So sometime, somewhere between, I would say, 25 to 29 degree of Sagittarius. But also be careful with that because obviously the outer planets uh, such as Neptune, Pluto, or Uranus, they tend to be spending a little bit more time around uh, one degree, right? So therefore, maybe I would be cutting back the orb of the outer planets, maybe just to half a degree or very maximum to the uh, one degree overall. So for instance, my galactic center is um, in conjunction to Neptune within one degree. So that might be a little bit more important in a sense that, um, uh, because it's close by, but if it was on 29 degree, maybe I would not be looking at it um, so deeply. So I think if you have got any personal planets or social planets 
around your galactic center, there is something which you really need to learn about that planet. You need to be downloading a lot more information. You need to learn about that planet a lot more. Now, maybe with the outer planets, I kind of like urge you to look at the dispositor, the dispositor. So uh, the ruler of, for instance, that Neptune, and maybe the ruler of Neptune uh, would be uh, Jupiter. So where is your Jupiter? And maybe also you're going to have to learn about that as well. So the very low manifestation of Sagittarius is greed, or it becomes very judgmental because it kind of doesn't believe in certain things. It has got that very strong moral code going on, what's right and what's wrong. And uh, therefore what Sagittarius can do is that it can uh, formulate opinions and uh, it sticks to those opinions. It doesn't wanna go away from those. So um, Sagittarius kind of like talks to you about uh, how you merge the factual and the spiritual knowledge overall. And uh, the very lower manifestation of Sagittarius is that we actually don't want to uh, focus on um, merging spiritual knowledge with factual knowledge. So it can be kind of like I'm going to the extremes. Either I'm, either I'm very fact-driven or either I'm very... Um, uh, spiritual driven, but I do need to learn how to merge the two. So Sagittarius is all about not just knowing what is right in front of us, but actually seeing beyond the facts also. Uh, this is kind of like, I would call the galactic center as a uh, accumulated wisdom point in your chart. And I'm going to come back onto that why I believe that. Um, I think this point, especially if you have got any planet there, kind of tells you that what is true for you, it might not true for others. And the little danger of Sagittarius is that it becomes the know-it-all type. Uh, kind of like it might believe that uh, the universe is kind of revolves around you. So there is that very strong spiritual ego type of character going on. Now, the higher manifestation of Sagittarius is, is the ability to admit that I don't know everything, but I'm actually ready to gain as much knowledge, knowledge as possible. So I'm continuously studying. But if I become an eternal student, you know, and then I'm not ready to share the point that basically the knowledge gets stuck within us. Uh, Sagittarius higher manifestation is that we, we know that we are all different and there is no right or wrong. Uh, uh, I'm ready to actually look at other people's perspective as well. So it's all about learning to accept something. So especially if you have got any planet around 27 degree of Sagittarius, it's all about learning to accept that planet somehow. And you might wanna be looking at, let's say you've got Mercury there. You might wanna be looking at, okay, what does Mercury rule in my chart? And maybe something <clears throat> which I have to accept around those house topics overall. Now, this uh, galactic center really got activated last year by actually South Node, sometimes in 2020, June. And uh, every single year around the 19th of December, the sun will be actually making a conjunction to the galactic center also. So I tend to believe that the galactic center is something to do with kind of like a yearly forecast for from a mundane perspective. And of course, by having the South Node around last year it could have indicated that we really needed to let go of something uh, which is knowledge related. So understanding that we, you know, we don't see everything or not everything is black and white, like how we believe. So the, sorry, the galactic center, which usually we showed, uh, we you call it as GC point in the chart, is kind of like a hot spot. So our sun rotates around the galactic center. Uh, as I mentioned, it was discovered in 1974, uh, 19th of uh, February. And what was interesting is that we did have the south node there, uh, exactly on 27 degree with a very tight conjunction to Saturn. 
Now, uh, therefore, it's worth having a look at what the South Node and um, Saturn conjunction actually means for us. Sorry, I made a mistake. So the, um, in the discovery chart, we had the South Node conjuncting the South Node, but it was in the sign of Gemini. So therefore we had the North Node um, on um, um, 27 degree of Sagittarius. So now the South Node and the Saturn conjunction is very much about overcoming Saturnian attitudes. So either it talks about being pessimistic or kind of like having that uh, constricting nature overall, it might indicate that we tend to be worrying too much because it's in the sign of uh, Gemini. It could actually talking about how rigid we are when it comes to certain outlook on life, maybe something to do with information. So again, it kind of inf uh, tells us that we don't know everything, right? Saturn as in blockage, in the information segment, Sagittarius. So actually we need to see beyond facts overall. Saturn South Node actually can indicate that we like isolating or we like getting detached from life. Maybe we want to be ignoring social duties or actually it could indicate that we should not get uh, stuck in the past. Actually, we do need to learn what the future is actually bring for us overall. Or it could talk about things like, we don't have to do everything um, with old methods. We actually can discover new things overall. The house position will kind of show you where with the South Node and, and um, Saturn together, where you might be kept as a prisoner. Uh, where we tend to be worrying quite a lot and we tend to be actually uh, kind of like worry about that area of life overall. Now, because I don't, we don't know what time actually this galactic center was discovered. So we, we might not be able to figure out exactly the specific uh, house position, but it very much talks about that, uh, you know, the lack of information. Uh, overall, it talks about uh, the fact that, you know, we don't study enough. We just study what is right in front of us, where we don't go as far as possible. So I think the Galactic Center, if you have got any planet there, it's kind of like embracing that energy, and it's all about spiritualizing that planet overall. So also another thing which you're going to see in the discovery chart is that we have got the ruler of the nodes, uh, the North Node, so, uh, sorry, um, um, Jupiter, in conjunction to the Sun, in the sign of Aquarius. Now, I kind of find it fascinating because obviously uh, you can see that this conjunction is happening around 24, 26 degree of Aquarius. And that's exactly where Jupiter is actually sitting right now. And that's exactly where we have got the South Node. I mean, South Node is still in the sign of uh, Sagittarius at the moment. So this could really talk about that this is a period of time for us where we're going to have to really start focusing on our future. And when the sun will actually trigger that point in the chart, it pretty much kind of like an awakening uh, that, you know, how the future is going to look like. So I'm very curious to see what is going to be happening, of course, at the end of the year, because, uh, yes, we do have got uh, Sun being on the Galactic Center. We're going to have also a, um, um, a lunar energy going on as well around that time. We're going to have a full, um, uh, sorry, a full moon, yes. And we're also going to be having the Saturn and Uranus square also. So I kind of feel that this is somehow the rebirth of the galaxy overall. But Jupiter and Sun conjunction in the discovery chart in the sign of Aquarius really talks about the expansion of knowledge and information. It's about how we are going to be moving forward, how we actually create some type of communities for ourselves, whether we have got the tendency to want to have a peak in the future. Um, Jupiter and um, Sun conjunction really could talk about 
the, the expanded side of the ego. This is a very lucky position, don't get me wrong, but uh, Jupiter and Sun together could really talk about someone who is gonna be become, who is gonna become famous overall. Or it could talk about the possibility to have plenty of opportunities overall. Jupiter and Sun conjunction very much about proving your authority. It talks about career opportunities. It talks about being clear about your goals and the path overall, how you can actually manifest success. And in order for you to do that, you're going to have to look beyond. So maybe, you know, a reminder, for instance, with sun hitting the 29, sorry, the 27 degree of Sagittarius is that, you know, I've been an accountant for 20 years. Maybe I'm going to have to move away from that. So uh, Sun is the planet of creativity, might be actually wanting you to be a little bit more creative, a little bit more adventurous overall. Now, as you can see in the discovery chart, we also had Moon conjuncting Neptune also, which is really much a reminder that we are a lot bigger than ourselves. So somehow Neptune is as the planet of kind of like oceans, right? We know how big the oceans are. And moon is your feelings. So it kind of like a reminder, especially if you have got a planet around the galactic center, that you do need to listen to your uh, intuition overall. I feel like this is very much about opening up your conscious mind, kind of like urging you to release all the emotional wounds and traumas altogether. And... Um, Imagine the galactic center is kind of like a transmitter of the divine consciousness overall. So uh, it's all about, you are reminded uh, that you have got free will, you have got the freedom, you have got the right to actually search for your own truth. You've got the right to utilize that planet the way you want to be um, utilizing it. So I look at the galactic center as kind of like a master degree overall. And if you have got a planet within about two degree, the closer it is, you must master that uh, planet very strongly. Now the galactic center is uh, said to be moving approximately one degree every 72 years. The center of the Milky Way is kind of like a a region of space. It's not an actual object, actually. Uh, as I mentioned, our solar system ro rotates around this uh, point, and uh, it wants to be kind of reminding you the vast knowledge you can actually achieve or how you can create freedom for yourself overall. Just think about the universe as, uh, as an object, how much we don't know about it yet. So it's about tapping into your personal power and knowing what you don't know about yourself of, or also. Uh, even many Asian cultures were aware of the galactic center actually, and they considered it as a key point in the astronomical and astrological observations. Um, they believe that uh, the galactic center kind of had an influence on life on earth so it's kind of like a point of life purpose in your chart basically now sun and mercury will be joining the galactic center or gc uh, i think it brings kind of like a conscious awareness uh, about your spiritual potentials uh, it might be telling you to discover something to do with your energetic fields overall, knowing that you are an energetic, energetic beings overall. Uh, it might want to bring you somehow an awareness about the path you are actually invited to take. Uh, kind of like having a strong sense of direction or what is my life purpose or what is the meaning of my existence overall. And think about Mercury as the resources. So probably with Mercury uh, conjuncting the galactic center is very much about figuring out my talents, figuring out um, 
you know, that we can do things manually also. So it's about reconnecting with the source overall. So I feel like um, with the sun, it's all about understanding the purpose of your own, uh, having a deeper level of awareness about why I do things in a certain way. Remember, the sun always wants to illuminate issues related to your past, in a sense. So it's going to be highlighting maybe that uh, discovery chart, Saturn and South Node conjunction, that it's something which I didn't know about my past. And then it's going to kind of highlight it for us. And then I'm going to have to face that. And I'm going to have to kind of put it in the bin overall. Uh, Mercury definitely will support this because Mercury is kind of like the mental capacity. It's about uh, elaborating and being able to interpret on a, of any of the insights we receive. So probably Mercury will be making the conjunction first, as I mentioned on the 12th of um, December. So this could really talk about that I receive kind of like a insight overall. Maybe it's going to be a symbol. Maybe it's going to be some type of synchronicity. Maybe it's going to be kind of like a hidden message. And uh, if we don't necessarily understand those symbols, messages, I'm not able to translate them, which is very much about Mercury in the sign of Sagittarius, then Sun will actually highlight that for us on the 19th of December a lot stronger. It's a uh, I think it's very much about a, a kind of like a spiritual awakening overall. It, uh, it's a reminder that uh, you're going to have to connect with your inner sources overall. Uh, it invites you to have kind of like a deeper trust in your intuition overall. Um, because from another angle, knowing everything, what's going to be happening in the future, we can't really control that. Right. So I feel like Sun and Mercury conjunction around the galactic center could really talk about major breakthroughs, some type of uh, unexpected revelations overall, uh, which eventually can lead to some type of growth in the next one year for uh, for you. I tend to believe that this galactic center has got a little bit of a plutonian type of energy because the galactic center is all about the birth of the universe overall. So therefore, whenever Pluto actually transits that point, this could really talk about the uh, major changes in the world. Now, the very last time Pluto was there was sometimes uh, 2007, second part of the year, and the very beginning of 2008. And we do know that the world actually kind of had this tremendous amount of transformation overall. Now, depending on where you have got your galactic center, uh, if it's in your first house and therefore the sun will trigger that for you, it's kind of like um, connecting to something new, uh, which you might feel intuitively very right. It's about um, a deep knowledge that you are here to do, or it's about the knowledge why I'm not able to kind of shine as much as want to. It might be actually that you feel very much ahead of your own time when it comes to your own truth or ideas or even the approach you take in, in the world. Uh, it could actually indicate that you boldly want to step into something, wanting to step into a world stage, a spotlight overall. Um, um, it very much uh, talks about with this transit that you're going to have to unite your personality with your life mission, with your vocational call overall. It, it might be a kind of like a realization that Everything I do has got a purpose. Everything happening to me has got a reason, okay? Uh, it also can indicate, actually, I mean, actually, if you have got a galactic center in the second house, then it kind of indicates that um, maybe it's 
um, how I can illuminate issues around economic situation around myself. So it's something to do with seeing that I'm doing a good job. Do I actually get paid in the right way for that? It's about um, what my values are and do I actually live up to my values or do I disregard them completely? And then I do something which actually I don't necessarily like doing. So I think um, uh, this point here could talk about the oneness, the interconnectedness, somehow becoming peaceful with yourself or the possibility of being able to love myself. So how I am going to be projecting myself to others and what type of feedback I will be receiving. If you have got this galactic center in the third house, you know, it could be talking about a, a, a very great ability in the technological fields. So it might want you to kind of have a out of box type of thinking, uh, like being, for instance, interested in uh, quantum philosophy uh, or, you know, spiritual matters. It could really highlight for you that it's time to actually have a deeper understanding about why I com communicate in certain ways. It might be about wanting to jumpstart a, a creative project overall. It could talk about uh, the fact that you kind of need to or you must communicate or write or being on a radio or internet or I need to become a teacher or something to do with uh, some type of communicational fields. If you have got the galactic center in the fourth house, uh, you, it's highlighted for you the need to actually build foundation of a new paradigm. It could be about how I can connect the past and the future together. So making the dots. So it could talk about things like I have to discover why on earth I'm making very similar mistakes in life or why certain things are repeating from time to time. And uh, remember, astrology is all about spotting patterns. So it's always good to go back in the past and then seeing what happened, I don't know, 20 years ago, two years ago, when I had very similar transits, for instance, and how I am going to be connecting the dots. And that's the higher manifestation of Sagittarius overall. Uh, this could talk about uh, actually just looking at the earth as the earth mother overall. So what I can do to, to nurture the earth around me or what I can do to nurture my own family. It might be about um, honoring um, kind of like younger aspirations or uh, othering, uh, honoring other people's opinion overall about certain type of things. If you have got the galactic center in the fifth house, it might be that you're going to get involved uh, with helping children, um, so, some type of children who, who have got this futuristic way of talent or, or uh, way of thinking overall. Maybe helping those people who, who are not heard or not listened to, or helping children, for instance, who need to express themselves in a creative way. And somehow this is kind of like an empowering point overall. So instead of becoming greedy, how you can uh, become generous, we can actually teach those type of things to people also. It might be about how you embody fun, play or romanticism in your life without feeling guilty. Uh, it might be about discovering your risk-taking side overall and then letting yourself to be guided uh, by divine forces also. If you have got galactic center getting triggered in your sixth house, um, it might be the fact that you need to discover that you are a divine healer, uh, that you have got a very strong intuition to kind of read other people's body or having a kind of like a holistic approach to your work. Uh, 
uh, it might be about the fact that I need to be treating some type of symptoms more from a um, holistic point of view rather than I'm I don't know I've got a headache and I'm just going to be taking tablet and you know it's all going to get better overall it might be the fact that you're going to have to become the server of a new innovative uh, paradigm I don't even know if I pronounce that word right but don't worry about it I'm sure you know what I want to be um, uh, saying there so it's kind of like uh, being the, the like serving some type of new uh, forces overall. If you have got the galactic center getting triggered in your seventh house, um, how can I actually sort out some type of conflict in a peaceful way? Because this is the house of cooperation and it might be the need to understand that you know, I have to listen to others. And then once I uh, portray those abilities of listening and understanding other people's values, then they will start understanding me as well. And they're going to start trusting my opinions. So it does talk about learning to unite overall. Or it might be about the fact that knowing that my relationship must be based on honest conversations. So how we are going to be sharing information with each other. It might be about uh, helping actually someone else who get lost in their relationship and then we can actually highlight something to them with that Mercury by actually communicating about facts and data overall uh, or approaching the way of thinking in a spiritual way. It might be about the fact that you want to be finding uh, harmony or some type of peace overall in your life. It might be about coming up uh, basically uh, with a solution to certain type of problems uh, which you have been facing maybe since 2020 June, but it might be by the help of others. If you have got the galactic center getting triggered in your eighth house, it might be a reminder of the need of a powerful transformations. Or it might be reminding you that you are a powerful transformers. So maybe the fact that I can go somewhere and then I can actually transform other people's life or I can transform system or I can actually let someone... Uh, let go of their own or unsustainable ways of dealing with some type of crisis situation or pressure in their life. Maybe it's about helping someone who kind of has crumbled recently. Any type of planets in the A for the 12th house very much talks about the need to kind of come away from your own wounds and then helping others to heal theirs because by helping others, my wounds also get thinner as well overall. It might be about doing an intense research about uh, uh, your own truth, whether it's right or wrong. And then I'm gonna be admitting if it's wrong or I'm gonna be sticking to it if I feel it's very right. Maybe it talks about the fact that you're gonna have to see death more like as a multidimensional uh, type of passage overall. Uh, maybe seeing death uh, as in a conscious choice. So I've got the right or I've got the ability to stay on earth or leave earth whenever I want to. Maybe it's about uh, exposing something which is um, exposing untruth overall, bringing that to light. <clears throat> Maybe it's about uh, sex not to be seen as a burden, but seeing as a powerful merging of two souls and uh, not necessarily looking at it as kind of like a power struggle overall. If you have got the galactic center getting triggered in your ninth house, well, it's getting tuned into spirits and sources and God and spirituality overall. It's about inviting those inner gods to give you messages about or giving you divine information or impulses or signs about which way you're going to have to go next. 
it might be actually that, you know what, I can be kind of like a globe trotter. I can be the citizen of the world or the cosmos or the earth. So it might be a reminder that I wanna be moving somewhere else. And it's not just necessarily about changing countries really. It's about traveling between dimensions overall when it comes to your dreams. So shifting dreams, uh, you know, I have always dreamed to become a lawyer. So then you might be reminded that, yes, I can actually do that. So I can actually study towards it. But remember, it's always the Galactic Center, especially here, is a reminder that you are just a small spot in the universe and the things are a lot bigger out there. So you're going to have to think outside of the box overall. So it's about thinking globally and on a universal level it might be just about interpreting a divine message to others also. You might be having a psychic kind of like um, um, attack or information. And, you know, I'm going to be sharing that with others also. If you have got the Galactic Center getting triggered in your 10th house, it's about re the realization of your unique authority figureness and maybe helping others how to connect to theirs also. It's kind of like a sacred father energy uh, and how to actually bring that together with the sacred mother energy. So there is the balance, the need to balance the yin and the yang energies overall. Or it might be about seeing time as a cycle in your life. So. It's not just about, you know, I'm 25 years old. Maybe you are actually 55 years old and you're going to have that type of um, uh, mentality that, you know what, maybe the calendar is not right, right? So time is something which is kind of like a natural cycle. Maybe actually it reminds you that uh, you're going to have to make some type of career choices. Uh, and uh, choosing a career which is actually portraying somehow your own truth um, and it might be kind of like a, a profession which is actually helping to connect the dots for others also if you have got the galactic center getting triggered in your 11th house uh, i think it's a reminder that you are a genius at heart that uh, it's a reminder to discover your humanitarian qualities and goals overall it's about cooperating with groups of people. It's about having the idea of creating a community overall, being a part of a community actually, which appeals to you strongly. It's about having a vision and how I can actually connect to that vision of mine. Uh, by the way, kind of it needs to be a humanitarian vision overall. So the 11th house is very much about your long-term goals overall. So where I am going to be in 20 years time and how I'm going to be, how I'm going to get there. And then if you have got um, the galactic center getting triggered in your 12th house, it's kind of like understanding. I think it's a very interesting position, to be honest, because I think it's understanding that uh, there are no limits. It's about recognizing the power of the divine overall, which starts from you because you are the middle of the earth. It's about helping others, of course, to connect to their divine selves also. It's about how to get out of the darkness and then walking towards the light overall. Maybe you're gonna be reminded to do some type of meditation or uh, I'm gonna go to a quiet, silent retreat where I'm gonna be discovering these type of powers. And uh, you're gonna discover your divine spirit spiritual essence overall. Um, it's ob about dissolving your ego and kind of like renewing yourself. The galactic center is a very, very hard to understand point in our chart, I think. And I hope this video helps you to, to, to make the best out of these two transits, which is on the 12th of December and the 19th of December. So thank you everyone and see you shortly with another video. Bye-bye.